good morning. Uh, today I'm in uh, a deeper part of Epping Forest than I uh, normally go. I decided to uh, treat myself today um, and come out a bit further into the forest. So we're actually not in London anymore, we're now in uh, Essex, just over the border into Essex from, uh, from where I live in London. And um, the, this part of Epping Forest is a bit bigger and also um, a bit quieter. So it is de it's definitely easier to uh, find a bit of um, solitude and uh, peace and quiet here uh, than the parts that I normally go to. Um, so I just thought I'd give you a little flavour of uh, Epping Forest and, uh, and what you might, might see here. I've just been, <laughs> just as I was setting up here, I've just been uh, watching squirrels chasing each other along the, along the forest floor. Um, they seem to be in a very playful mood. I guess at this time of year they've got plenty of, uh, plenty of food and uh, it's not too cold, so they, uh, they're not, they're not uh, fighting for su survival here. They're not in, uh, in winter mode yet. Um, and of course the, uh, the trees have just uh, produced their beech nuts and acorns, uh, plenty of berries on the trees, so uh, there's plenty, plenty to eat. Um, so the squirrels are in playful mood today. Um, this part of Epping Forest is, uh, is, is predominantly beach, um, so you get uh, uh, the typical um, habitat of a beach forest, which is r r relatively low levels of, um, of ground cover compared to an oak forest, because beech trees are very efficient at um, gathering the light and gathering pretty much all of the light, which leaves less um, less opportunity on the woodland floor for um, for other plants to, uh, to 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 thrive, as you might see in uh, other kinds of forests. Um, I'm just going to pause a moment because we've got a we've got a lot of noise from this aircraft. So I, I, um, I've had a little look around uh, this morning, just a little wander around, and um, have noticed a lot of uh, fungi, a lot of mushrooms and uh, toadstools around, which look interesting from a photographic point of view. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to give that a go. Um, also, I hope to see um, a few of the t typical woodland birds, um, such as you know, if I'm lucky, such as uh, nuthatch and tree creeper. So that's what I'll be predominantly on the lookout for. Also, of course, looking out for woodpecker uh, and possibly even... The last time I was here, actually, I did get a glimpse of a, a sparrowhawk. So you never know, all sorts, of, uh, all sorts of things are possible. So I'll be keeping a sharp eye out and seeing what I can see. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoy coming along for the, uh, the walk with me. Let's see what we can see. Well, uh, this part of Epping Forest is on the Loughton side. This is probably the biggest chunk of Epping Forest and um, you can get reasonably deep in to the woods here. Um, still always a sound of a road in the distance, but uh, not too bad. Um, and uh, it's quite hilly, which I like. 
Um, so I'm just going to give you a little spin round, so uh, so you can kind of get a sense of the scenery and the landscape around. Um, this is a beech forest, of course, and uh, predominantly beech. There's quite a lot of silver birch around as well, um, and uh, some lovely. In this particular bit, there's some lovely uh, mosses on the ground. Um, the forest is characterised really by uh, fern and uh, moss, holly. Um, silver birch beach um, and it's very uh, very nice at this time of year of course the uh, you may be able to see in the distance there's some um, ferns over there beginning to uh, well going yellow uh, there'll be another couple of weeks and they'll be um, some of them are still green but they'll be turning yellow and then brown um, I'm definitely going to come back here once the, the leaves have fallen and see if I can have, have well I have seen and also heard an awful lot of, uh, of uh, woodpeckers. With all this um, rotting wood of course it's perfect habitat for woodpeckers. Um, when, when wood is allowed to decay like this you get a much uh, richer ecosystem um, and uh, perfect for woodpecker and also for fungi. The place is absolutely, at this time of year, is absolutely full of fungi. All sorts of uh, toadstools, mushrooms and strange, uh, strange, I mean everywhere, it's just everywhere, look, look. I mean this is a sort of, I don't know what that is, it's some brown kind of thing, there's some, See if we can see any more. There's some. Uh, let's have a look over here. This side. There's some. Uh, some. Some sort of uh, yellowy orange uh, fungus. It's all part of the process of recycling the nutrients from the wood, and uh, fungi break it down and. Um, return that goodness to the soil for the next generation of plants and animals. There's some, I've seen quite a lot of, uh, see look, look at this, this is, uh, seen quite a lot of um, fungi that's been nibbled, I don't know what by, possibly squirrels and things, but uh, there's this interesting thing here, I don't know what kind of fungi that is, but then there's another sort of strange greyish mushroom there and then over here we've got two different types one quite bright yellow and uh, this red red and white one there's a I don't know if you can see it in the dark underneath the tree there's a sort of uh, classic mushroom shape of a sort of brownish hat with a sort of red stalk uh, just maybe we can, oh, let's see. Got right over here we've got to, I don't know whether that's a different type altogether there. Um, some more there. And it's uh, just uh, everywhere. is quite pleasing to my eye. Um, and then there's this moss on the floor here. We've got uh, beach mast. These are the outer outer shell of the uh, of the beach fruit, beach nut. Um, This uh, lovely mossy tree tree roots.
tried to capture this in some photos. I'll have to have a look on the computer later and see how they came out.